Live. I'm your host, Araya McGarry, and I'm very excited to have you here with us tonight for so many reasons. For one thing, our prayer lines are open this evening for you to call in and pray with somebody who wants to pray with you to help your prayers happen because God does hear our prayers. And where two or three are gathered, there he is in the midst. So the prayer lines tonight will be throughout the evening on the bottom of the screen, 770 three zero zero nine eight two eight and God has done it again he has brought together two amazing women who both have a heart for orphans and you may ask what do the orphans in Haiti have to do with the orphans escaping in the Ukraine you're gonna find out because tonight I've got two amazing women who have a heart and a mission to help both these countries and they're gonna tell you their stories how they started how they got there and what's really happening in Ukraine right now and how you can help Help, and how they covet more than anything your prayers. So don't go away. We've got music, we've got stories, and we have a way for you to help and pray for orphans that need you more than ever. But first, we've got some wonderful music from Jordan B. Band, and they're going to perform When I Think. Jordan B. Band, take it away. <laughs>
It's easy to miss my friends Getting caught in the fray But take it in Watch it twice It was one for us, don't you know love a good band, don't you? That was Jordan B. Band, and they will be back, so don't go away. You're going to hear more from them. Music definitely soothes the soul, and it's a universal language, so we will bring you more in just a little bit. But first, I have a woman here who has a heart and a mission for Ukraine. Not just Ukraine itself, but the orphans that are there, the families, you've got to hear her story and find out how you can help and how you can pray for them and what is happening. So, Cindy Knight, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. We are so glad you are here. You know, it's funny how God does that. He brings just the right people at just the right time to the show. And so many people want to hear from this side of the stories that are happening in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. what, what's on the ground, who we can help, what's happening to the children and the families, more than just what we see in the, new, in the news. So first of all, let's talk about you and how God opened the door to this missionary in the first place. Um, well, I was... Um on a trip one time a long time ago to Swaziland and God really just opened my eyes to mission work and um, how he could possibly use me in that um, sphere and um, uh, about 16 years ago a missionary came to our church and we had a big missions conference and um, Vic Jacobson was the founder of this organization called Hope Now and he came and he spoke to all of us and um, invited us to come and uh, go to his new camp that he just opened up for orphans in Ukraine. Um, so we weren't, uh, we, we didn't have any plans to do su such a thing as a family, um, but really just the Holy Spirit just opened our eyes and, and, and led us over to Ukraine and we had been going there ever since. Isn't that amazing how God already planted the seeds for you to be there to help in such a time as this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you go over to um, your missionary. It's, did you say Swaziland? Yes. Okay, and then you end up in the Ukraine. Yes. Who's, whose idea was it or mission or calling was it to be in the Ukraine? Of all the places in the world, why the Ukraine? Um, well, um, because um, actually my husband is English and the founder of our ministry is also English. And usually where there's two Brits in the same, even in there in Carnegie Hall, they'll find each other. Um, and so we were, um, in, we, we, our church had invited all of these various missionaries that our church sponsored. There were 14 of them. Mm. Um, and we were able to get 13 to come to our missions conference. And one of the people was Vic. And when he spoke, I think it just really resonated with my husband. And um, we decided to go ahead and, and join his mission group. Um, you know, we our our mission uh, conference sort of ended on a sort of an altar call, 
and um, which was also unusual and not particularly in the script or anything like that. Um, but our pastor just said, you know, I really feel like there's somebody here, somebody in our own congregation who is really being called to the mission field. And I just really feel like you need to come up here. And all of a sudden, I was on the stage singing in the praise band and about as far away from me as possible, here comes my husband walking out of the tech booth. And I'm thinking, what, him of all people? <laughs> Um, and, and he came up and, and we prayed and, and we just felt like God was calling us to the mission field. So we That's took our kids and we just started very small. You know, you can mm -hmm. just take small steps and we just went on a mission trip, um, helped out, a, helped out at a camp. And as I said, just every year kept going back and more and more and more, um, you know, over the years, yeah. over 16 years. And you said something really important. You said we took small steps because mm -hmm. when God calls you, He doesn't just throw. You, most of the time, he doesn't just throw you in some place. Now, in extreme circumstances, sometimes people do get thrown into, you know, it, it faster. But like you said, you took you and your family. You took small mm -hmm. steps. Mm -hmm. How many children do you have? We have two children. Okay, and now they're in the ministry with you, right? Um, well, my son is uh, st uh, studying to be a doctor, and he is going to be. Um, he's married with a beautiful uh, child and a wonderful wife, and they, they've always been a big part of our ministry, um, but they are stateside, and they're um, getting ready to do a residency. Um, my daughter, Zoe, she was teaching in uh, a, a Christian um, school here in, in Charlotte, actually, in the South, and um, she took a year off, and she decided to take a sabbatical and go over to Ukraine and um, really teach in the Christian school that we have partnered with, wow. where we have um, some scholarships for some of the orphans that come out of our orphanage, and we're able to lift them up and put them into Christian homes and teach them in a real Christian school. So she was teaching um, at this school, and then right around the very end of, of January, of course, the United, the the uh, embassy in in Kiev, the U.S. embassy, requested all Americans to vacate, you know, to ev start evacuating voluntarily. So, unfortunately, she she had just really gotten back after Christmas break, and she had to uproot and um, and go go to Europe. But she's been very instrumental in helping us um, evacuate a lot of the um, Ukrainian children. We were able to take some of them out and put them into different um, safe places. We have kids in Romanian orphanages now. We have moved some of the older children to Italy and to Sweden. We've got some friends um, that, are, that are hosting some large families in Spain. So um, Zoe was able to be in some key places at the right time and to really help with some of the older orphan graduates that have aged out of the orphanage. They were able to, to go themselves to Sweden. That's definitely a calling too. I've heard that because people always are giving to orphans and you forget what happens once they age out. Yes. Now what? Yes. So I'm glad you do that. Your daughter la was able to evacuate safely. Now she's in Europe and she's able to help from Europe. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard the most heartbreaking moment on the news a couple of weeks ago. It might have just been two weeks ago. And it was this mother and I saw them taking people on these buses from the Ukraine that were going to Poland and you know God bless all the surrounding people all the yeah. kindness mm -hmm. and she said something so touching to me and maybe you can touch on this because there's some people that have families mm -hmm. in Poland these buses are taking them to this spot where those who have family get off and then those who don't continue on and she goes she was one continue on she didn't know anybody and she goes we get on these buses with our children, we don't know anybody, we don't know where we're going, mm -hmm. and she goes, we just are hoping that the humans on the other side will be kind to us. Mm -hmm. So how do you help? Because you're getting, you're getting the kids out. Mm -hmm. Tell us what that looks like. How, did, how can she, your daughter help, and how can you help move them someplace that's safe, where people are going to be kind to them? Uh, well, um, you know, God just sent me all these really amazing people, because um, people here in the States. Um, there's one lady, she's in Tampa, and she reached out to me and she, she just said, hey, your organization looks very similar to mine, except mine's in Romania and yours is in oh. Ukraine. And if you need any help with um, a place for, for your kids to, to go, then I'm right here. And I kind of forgot about her. Okay. And then I got very involved with, you know, all a lot of other very complicated um, situations when, when, you know, what Russia reinvaded Ukraine. And um, so then she contacted me again, hey, don't you need my help? And 
and I was like, yeah, actually I do. <laughs> um, and so, not needing help. Mm -hmm, and so she has been very um, wonderful in that we've been able to um, use our own people for the most part to, um, to go get the kids in central Ukraine and to um, organize them and their guardians to be able to get all the way across the border. Mm -hmm. It takes like about two days physically in a car, in a, in a van, and you know, there's curfews everywhere in Ukraine. Um, you have to get to your destination before the curfew sets in. There are certain churches that you can stop at along the way. Um, but at the beginning, it was very chaotic and, you know, air sirens going off all the time and, you know, fearing that, you know, you're going to, the missile is going to fall in your car and all that kind of thing. So um, getting all the way to the border in and of itself is a pretty big task. Yeah. And we have some wonderful, wonderful, very dedicated volunteers who essentially are, are risking their lives um, in, a, in a couple of different ways. They're risking their life, first of all, just to drive on these really treacherous roads, um, you know, where there are missiles flying and things. Mm -hmm. um, but also, generally speaking, the drivers are men. And all men ages 18 to 60 are not allowed to leave Ukraine. Um, they can become, they can be conscripted into the army at any moment. So we have all these wonderful young, you know, dr drivers who fall in that category, and they're just bravely driving all these kids to, all the way to the border, wow. you know, in, in in broad daylight essentially. So once they get to the border, then um, and we've been taking our kids over um, into Romania, um, Poland, w just because where we are geographically located, we're sort of in the central in really in the heart of Ukraine. It's the geographical center of Ukraine. And um, whereas Kyiv is about two hours north of where we are, and Kyiv and Lviv are sort of along the same path. And so that path really, that northern road pretty much goes to Poland. And okay. that's where the bulk of the population is going. Um, and likewise, the people down in Odessa, a lot of those people are coming to Moldova, those borders and, you know, into the lower part of Romania. So we're sort of central. We are going, you know, sort of right into Romania. Um, so so we have people that are bringing our kids right to the border, and then we have people in Romania who are kind enough, like you said, that you know God has sent kind, wonderful people to help, yeah. um, and they're coming to help alongside of us and to be able to get the kids um, to the right people on the right buses with good people yeah. to bring them to safety to, um, to various orphanages in Romania because there are a lot of um, unsafe people as well hanging out at the border that. trying to also um, take those children yeah, off to, to, you know. Yeah, where there's good, there's where bad. There's evil. Yeah. And you also said that God provided. I, I love that you said God provided. This woman in Tampa says, hey, remember me? I want to help. So even yes. when we may, you know, drop, you know, and forget something, because no, re remind us, there's people that want to help you. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about there's men there mm -hmm. that have to stay there. And God yeah. bless them, because I know most of them want to stay in there. They want to, you know, fight for their country. And we've got all these kids, these women and children need to get out. Who do you have in the country? And they're risking their lives too. Oh, yeah. So do you still have a lot of missionaries? Are there women there yeah. that are helping making sure these kids are safe? Oh, yes. And tell us a little bit about how many you've gotten out so far. Um, well, we've brought, helped to bring across the border 272 souls um, through various means. And um, a lot of those, of course, are women and the bulk of them, of course, right. are women and children. Um, and um, let's see, uh, we just have so many wonderful people on the ground in Ukraine. So many churches um, are just cooking like crazy. They are literally feeding an army. Uh, and I'm not kidding, they're cooking day and night and they are feeding the soldiers in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So they usually feed, um, um, you know, people that are transiting through Ukraine on, you know, every other day, but every single day they are literally um, making all kinds of ho home cooked um, hot meals and physically taking them to the soldiers. So uh, we have a lot of pastors um, who are using their church vans to help us transport the kids. Um, we have one wonderful pastor who he, he sent his own family, just like you mentioned on, on the train, on the bus to Poland, right. 14 of them. Um, and he, and he's like, now this is, he's, he said he's living, um, right now, like God finally has called him to do what he's always dreamed to, to do. Huh. He sent his whole family away. So now he has time because he has 13 children 
So he has time now um, to be able to really serve his community. So we're sending him um, you know, funds and he's able to go and purchase food and he's taking it to a lot of our orphan families, orphans who have not yet made it out. So he's visiting all those people. Meanwhile, his family of, of 13 is tucked away now safely in an apartment in Spain. Now this might be, you might not be able to tell me the details on the how, but for, for us, over in all these uh, different countries who want to help, you're able to send them money. Mm -hmm. How do you get it to them? Because when we're watching the news, we're seeing just devastation, yeah. which there is. And now you're talking good news is that there's churches still up mm -hmm. and running. And I think of God's protection because mm -hmm. there is no rules in this one at all. There's no like back in the day where you put a red cross over a hospital and they wouldn't right. bomb it. Right. Here it's like free for all. It's just horrific. And I just see God protecting yeah. so many safe spots and people and missionaries. Mm -hmm. So talk to us a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. So um, how to physic how we physically get yeah, the money how, over? How do, yeah, how do you, mm -hmm. I, I know, I've heard of some of the people doing it very creatively, mm -hmm. how they support people of yeah. Ukrainian businesses. Right. But what can we do to help? And I know we, we yeah. want to talk yeah. about your website, how we can help that way with well, prayer as well. We have, um, luckily before we, before this happened, we, we sort of, uh, you know, uh, Ukraine is a real cash driven society. Oh, okay. So we have our own apartment and our own headquarters there. And I have a safe there and as you know, has, I've been stacking it up. So Gosh. those proceeds are there and we're able to you know use we'll the, safety on that yes yes safety on the safe. right so the safe is still there so that's okay, good, good. Um, but uh, we are also able to physically wire money to these various churches to close friends of ours and to our team I have a really big wonderful team in wow. Ukraine um, awesome. So we can wire the money over there. We also have an Airbnb. We turned our for our personal apartment into an Airbnb. I've heard of that. Um, yeah, and so you know, people just book a stay and then they pay for it, and then the money goes straight into that particular account. Um, we have a website well, that really works. So I'm glad it to really hear works. That. Yeah, they're really doing that all over the world now. Yeah, and then you know, my, that my my particular proceeds go to Daniel, and then I say Daniel, send it to this pastor, send 300 to this pastor, and 300 it. to that pastor, and so he can, you know, quickly do that. Ukrainians have. Uh, really a lot of apps are developed in Ukraine. It's a country that is just full of software developers. Did not know that. There's tons of IT programmers in Ukraine um, and they have they can make an app for anything. So their internal banking system is actually fairly robust. They can if you have if if you have somebody's telephone number, you can pretty much wire you can pretty much send money to them once you're in country. So what's your website and so people can go and they can find out more about how they can sure. help you. And I know there's one thing when I asked you before, what can we do to help cuz so many people want to help and we just don't know how. Right. And we want to make sure our help gets to the people that need the help. So I love it. You said they were able to wire it. You've got a church. You're up and running. You're yeah. getting them what they need. But you said, the one thing that touched my heart, you said they really covet our prayers. Yeah. And they really do. Mm -hmm. So tell us again your website and what information we'll find there on your website mm -hmm. to help. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, our website is hopenowusa.org. And um, you can go there and find out all kinds of information, the whole backstory about our ministry and how we've been working in Ukraine for more than 30 years. Um, you can um, sign up for our email blasts and get our little uh, evening what happened today. Oh, that's good. Um, and people then, want to stay up to date, not just from right, regular news sources. Right. Okay. So, and, but we really want people to pray. We want them okay. to pray for the protection of the children, those that are in Ukraine, those that we've moved to Romania, um, and all the ones that we've gotten all over all over the world so far. I'm heading out to Romania in about a week, so um, that's that'll be another way that I'll be able to bring supplies and I'll be able to buy supplies when I'm there as well and collect things and I'll physically bring them to the border and then my guys okay. will pick them up and okay. they will take them to the orphanage. I was about to ask you, are they letting, are you able to no, get No, because in? Okay. I, unless you have a Red Cross corridor, you're not allowed and like you said, those are not even being, um, you know, yeah. you don't want to be a burden as well to yeah. for, for somebody else to have to worry about about you. So it's better to keep everything, the, the, the correct channels are already in place. So you can get as far as Romania, then get to the border. Yep. God bless you for what you're doing. Absolutely. I hope everybody taps into your website, prays for you, hope they look and see what you need. And before you leave, I hope there's a list of what we need to get you to take over there to help. Because, yeah. you know, for the grace of God, there go I. Mm -hmm. And I love the way the world's coming together to help. But the question is always, how do I help? Right. So, Cindy, thank you for thank being you so here much. so much. Thank you. God bless you and your entire missionaries and your team. Thank you. Thank you.
And now we're gonna go back to some wonderful music with Jordan B. Band, so you can enjoy, I uh, love his music. He's going to perform with his band, My King, and Don't Know. Jordan B., welcome back. Don't know that 
that I want to be afraid and rub it around now this place I feel kind of dreary deep inside got nowhere to go nowhere to hide one two three
Again, thank you, thank you so much. Jordan B. Ban, you are just bringing down the house this evening, Man. and we're so glad. And it's perfect intro to my next guest, who is so much fun and such a big heart for the children and orphans of Haiti. I actually met her many years ago right here Yay. on this show, Atlanta Live, and we've become best of friends. And she is the author now of Choir of Angels, How 30 Orphans Changed their world. Linda, welcome back to the show. Yes, thank you so much. And this beautiful new set, right? Isn't, Isn't it gorgeous? Nice? I feel like I'm in Hollywood. <laughs> well, you are a little alive, and we are so glad you were here, and we are so excited about the new set as well. And you got the blue mambo, so you look great. Yes, yes, just to, just to match the setting. That's, that's what I'm all about. And uh, Linda, I know you as the woman who adores Haiti. You've got such a great story. We want to know about it in a snippet, but isn't it neat? You are the biggest, most wonderful prayer warrior that I have ever met. You run a prayer room with me and you were just so phenomenal about getting prayers answered. And look what God did tonight. Yeah. Here you are. We're going to talk a little bit about the kids of Haiti have to do with the kids of Ukraine, the orphans of Ukraine. And it wasn't planned, right. but it was planned by God. Right. Apparently before he put the stars in the sky and the sand on the beaches, he knew we were going to be here tonight. Amazing. Isn't I it know. blows my mind? Sometimes I'm like, how did he know that? He's right? amazing. He's amazing. <laughs> but some people don't know who you are. So you, I know you've got a great long story, but we want to know a little bit about you. And then we want to introduce this wonderful book that is your passion absolutely. project, Choir of Angels. Yeah. So I am known as Mommy Linda, which is absolutely hilarious. My amazing hot husband is here tonight, but you can't see him. He's off camera. But actually on our very first date, we made an agreement uh, that we would never have any children. So there was a, a, we were in a really nice uh, restaurant with white tablecloths and a little girl came running through with a naked Barbie doll screaming and yelling and I just, <laughs> it's our first date. I'm like, I don't know about you, but I don't want any of them. And we were like, we literally shook on it, right? And now here we are, tw well, however many, I'm 24, so what, Perfect, maybe, say yeah. 10 years later. And um, we are literally responsible for 5,000 children, right? God has Isn't a that sense insane? of humor. Hilarious. <laughs> so uh, the long story short of it, and that's in our first book, actually, Peanut Butter Crack and flip-flops talks about how my very best friend uh, was tragically taken from this earth. She left behind five children and uh, those five children ended up with my husband and I on the 17th day of the seventh month of the year 2007. Uh, they just happened to be Haitian and so really just out of selfishness on my own, I decided to take them to Haiti because I wanted them to be a little bit more grateful to me for saving their happy butts, right? I was like, they need to go see where they could be. And instead, God just messed me up, Aww. right? I saw things I'd never seen. I smelled things I'd never smelled. And I came back and I was like, I, we've got to do something. And on that first trip, Araya, was when I met these kids. Oh. So these, this is at the, actually at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Uh, that's them oh, singing okay. uh, the national anthem at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium for, a, I think it was an Atlanta Falcons game or a United game. And, but I met them on Christmas Day, 2011. And they sang for me and they just messed me up. And so the, the whole premise of this book is, it's how 30 orphans changed their world. But the real truth is, if you read it, it will change your world. Oh, yeah. Because they changed their world and their world included, uh, because basically after they sang for us in Haiti, we worked then for five years to figure out how to get them here to the United States. And so I, I just, I knew when they messed me up the way they did. I mean, I saw a joy I had never seen before in the United States, right? With children who had nothing. It really confused me. I was like, what is wrong with them? Do they not know? They do not have any running water. They don't have any electricity. It's Christmas day. They don't have any gifts. What are they so happy about? And you know, it was like Jesus Christ himself tapped me on the shoulder and said, uh, Linda, that's, joy. that's the joy of the Lord. 
I love that part about your story so yeah. much when you see you went down there and here's these kids who have nothing. Yeah. And they are they have joy. Yeah. And so many people look are searching for happiness and they forget they can look for joy. And joy is already here. We can have that joy that passes all understanding. Right. And you didn't understand it. No. You don't understand that. And you found that. And I think that's so important for people really to resonate that you can have joy even when you have nothing or when everything is hitting the fan. It's that joy that can only come from him. Right. It's the ability to live above your circumstances. Yeah. And these 30 kids had figured that, they had figured out how to, they could have you joy know, above their circumstances. And the mouths of babes. Right. So I just, we did whatever we had to do. And again, that's all in another book. It's um, another book. Yeah, it's another book. Another time, uh, another story. How we got them here. But the bottom line is, is that then everywhere we went, the exact same thing that happened to me while I was sitting on that urine stained day bed in that orphanage on Christmas Day, watching them, it happened to every single person that heard them sing. Oh, wow. And literally, lives were rocked. Uh, marriages were restored. Finances were restored. We had uh, an alcoholic that had tr been an alcoholic for 17 years came. Part of, our, uh, part of the choir was, at the end of each uh, concert, we allowed them to go out into the congregation and they chose who they wanted to pray for. Really? And Araya, we have story after story, it's in the book, literally of them crawling over top of people on pews uh, to pray for. It was like the Holy Spirit zoned them in on whoever it was that wow. needed prayer. One really exciting story about Eldo, and Eldo is actually featured in, we're, we're in the process of being a pilot for an episode on a brand new show that is going to feature celebrities and their favorite nonprofits. I love that. And uh, our, our celebrity, which this is, only God would hook Saturday Night Live up with Love Him, Love Them, right? Right, <laughs> so perfect. Keenan Thompson from Saturday Night Live, and, and we are the nonprofit that he chose. Uh, and this little boy's story is featured in there. But literally, at this concert, this little boy, his name was Eldo, came out and crawled over four or five different people to get to this lady. She, he prayed for her. And two years later, her husband was on a mission trip with us in Haiti, and he looked at me, and Eldo had lost two, he had gone through two host families and was not able to stay here in America. Aww. And his, his father, David Allen is his name, and he looks at Eldo and he says, does he not have a family? And he, he decides right there in the middle of that mission trip, I'm taking him home to Dawsonville, Georgia. Aww calls his wife and tells his wife, I'm going to bring home a, a child. At this point, he's 17 years old. And his every child that went out and prayed for someone, they gave them their bracelet. And their bracelet had love him, love them on it and the child's name. And when, when the man called home to tell his wife, I'm going to bring this boy home, oh. she looks at her bracelet and she said, what's his name? No. Yes. Oh, my God. She said, David, I've had his bracelet on for two and a half years. That's the little boy from the choir that came and prayed for me. Bring him on. <laughs> Oh right? God, you come, gave me goosebumps, yeah, Linda. It, oh, and I thought I knew every story you had to tell. I know none. No, no, no. Oh there are story, and that's what this book is oh. full of, is miracles that have happened uh, through these 30 children, not only for them, because 22 of those children that are in that choir had the opportunity to come here to the United States. They're living with a host family. They're either uh, on a student visa. They're here legally or they're in the process of being adopted. Right. And so the stories just continue. That's a movie, Linda. Yeah. Just <laughs> that, I mean, just follow his life, and that's a movie. Yeah, and it's, you know what? Oh Another God. amazing part of this book is when Eldo, and I've got his permission to tell this story. Even if I don't, I'm still telling him. <laughs> <laughs> but Eldo was born with six fingers on each hand, and the very first week, I think this is the first uh, story in the book about Majin, and everybody that knows me knows Majin is my absolute favorite. She was four years old when she came with the choir. Yeah, you have a favorite? And you I know. it on the air? Imagine that, right? <laughs> uh, my husband even told me whenever we were first coming with the choir, he's like, Linda, Majin is four. She is not going to be able to sing with the choir. Just stick her on a piano bench and give her a maraca. <laughs> and you know, she, we did two to three concerts a day. She was the star of the show Aww. every time. But when Majin first came to America, she, the first week she was here, we had, she was rushed to the hospital by ambulance. Uh, it's the first chapter in our book, and we have it on our podcast. We have an amazing podcast, the Love Him, Love Them podcast, and the book okay. is on there too. But um, the long story, the short story of that long story is when Majin went to the hospital, 
a nurse that was there heard our story. My husband gave her our first book and she called me in tears. She was like, I can't believe this story. I can't believe this kid was at the hospital. Is there anything I can do for you? And I said, well, actually, yeah, we have a kid here that's got six fingers on both hands. It's a huge, huge stigma in Haiti. Yeah. We would love to find a surgeon that can, can help us with that. And that ER nurse that treated my Jean on her first uh, trip to the emergency room, which my Jean ended up fine, got, our, got that, El, that same boy, Eldo, his surgery to have his finger removed before he uh, headed back to Haiti. So he, and you know, Array, I always say, say it, every uh, promo picture we have, his hands are, and you can Aww. see the extra finger on there, but his hands were always the ones that were up praising the Lord the most. So the, I'm telling it. you, this book wow. will change mm. your life. You will not, you will see, it's like the book of Acts. Okay. But it's lived out in today and it, it will change your world. You know, Linda, now more than ever, people need that. Just from what you're talking about, you're giving me goosebumps. You're making <laughs> me feel joy. You're making me, rem even if I never forgot, it's that reminder, God's in control. God has our back better than we can ever think or ask and how he just directs our path. When, I mean, two years later, I mean, she's got the name on the bracelet. That just really blew my mind. And he does things like that all the time. He's no respecter of person. If we just would trust him and say, I don't know what you're doing, but I know you got my back. Exactly. And in this day and age, we just need that childlike faith so much, not day by day anymore, but like moment by moment. Moment by moment, we absolutely. Really do. And I was gonna ask you, what is the takeaway from this book? If you could tell the viewers what they would take Way, but you just share with us, I mean, joy and inspiration and hope. But if you could tell the viewers, what are they, what's some takeaways from the this? The biggest takeaway from the Choir of Angels, which is 30 or how 30 orphans changed their world. The biggest takeaway is the Bible is alive and real. <laughs> and what the Bible says is, is lived out in here. And you will see, uh, you know how they say, well, I don't know how many Christians say this, but you know, they, some people say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Right. We had a tour bus, okay? And so our whole mantra the whole time we were on tour was what happens on the tour bus stays on. And I'm gonna tell you a lot of stuff happened on that tour bus, but now, it's and if you're, if you're one of our choir moms or one of our interns or any of the volunteers or the hundreds of people that were with us on this tour, you, a lot of people know the insane things that happened and how we were forced. Araya, we were placed into situations during that choir tour that we did not, we could not find help for. The only way we could make it through was to look into the Word of God and figure out how did Jesus do it. And I, I don't want to give it away because there, I, I could tell you some stories oh that gosh. would blow your mind. And, and most people will not believe. A lot of people that have read the book, they read it in one sitting and they call me and they're like, there is no way that was going on while you were on tour. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yes way, it was. And so the biggest takeaway is that really and truly what the Bible says, it actually happens today. And that if you have faith and believe, you can do supernatural things. There are supernatural stories in this, oh, in this book that I personally experienced myself. That if I, uh, and I have 30 witnesses that were there with me because otherwise you I wouldn't believe it. And so it's, it's, it's an unbelievable story. Yeah, you've always had stories like that. You say that, that I mean, <laughs> yeah. So I can attest to the story you're telling and you say there's witnesses and these things happen and, and you're a prayer warrior for a reason because everything we say that we're stressed about or we're going through, he's like, God's got that. And this is what happened. I have a story to tell you of things, even greater things that he's done. Right. And tell us what he commanded us or said that would happen after Jesus died on the cross. So he's we're told over things. and over in Mark, well, in Mark 16, 17, it says, for those of you who believe, and see, that's the problem with most Christians. Uh -huh. We don't believe. I mean, the Bible even says even the demons believe, but most Christians do not believe what the Bible says. But Mark 16, 17 says, for those of you who believe, you can lay your hands on the sick and they'll be healed. You don't even have to pray. Right. You can lay them on the sick. Do you know in James, and I just did this. I mean, I, I do it all the time. And, and there's nothing special about me. We, we, have a, we have a, a, a girl that's coming here Friday. I wish, I wish I could get Joanna to let her come on the show too. Her name is Aisha. She's here from the Ivory Coast. Uh, she's never walked a day in her life. I accidentally, quote unquote, ran into her at the Atlanta airport on my way to West Palm for another television show, uh, met her dad, got to pray for her. And last week, that was two weeks ago, last week she took her first steps. Oh my gosh. Not only did she take her me. first steps, but she's been basically in West Palm Beach for three years because that was the only place they could find surgeons. They were planning to buy a home there and stay. And instead they're now getting to go home to Michigan because someone took the time to pray for someone, right? Uh, we have stories, I mean, I have yeah. stories every All day. Time. That's the thing. A lot 
of people, their, their, their miracle stories are from 10 years ago. Our miracles should be from 10 minutes ago. Oh, right? I love that, yes. They should be. I love that. Because if we really believe what the Bible says and the fact that we can actually do greater things than what time. Jesus did when he was walking this earth, if we really believe that, we wouldn't walk past somebody in Walmart at the pharmacy that's in a wheelchair without stopping to pray for them. It's yeah. like we have the answer to everything but we want to selfishly keep it to ourselves. Or we're, we're, we're too embarrassed, or you don't know how somebody's going to receive it. And, uh, and you, know? You, know the, you know what the problem with that is? Is that it doesn't have anything to do with you, mm -hmm. right? Are you the one that heals them? Mm -hmm. No, God is who heals them. Yeah. So the fact that we would say, oh, I don't really know if that's going to work, I'm not real sure, that is doubt. Right. And you know, it tells us in James, do not be tossed back and forth like the waves. We need to believe. And so if we, if we just, I have a daughter, Samaika, she's like, <laughs> she'll pray for somebody. And I'm like, did they not get up and walk? You know, Mommy Linda, that's not my problem. I do what God tells me to do. I am obedient. I pray. I now it's for God to, to make, him, make the person walk. Not my problem. But the fact Sounds is. I like faith. Yeah, most of us don't want to be obedient. And your kids are great at prayer because they get on the phones with us and they pray. And like, you're always telling one of the girls to come over and pray because that childlike faith, you know, they have it. Because you tell us something, too, in our prayer lines and our prayer partners that we pray with. You say that, um, I have, as long as I believe, I have enough belief for you. I have enough faith. Faith for yeah. you. And, you know, a lot of people will say, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't have enough faith. But you know what the great news about that is? Romans 10, 12, it's kind of like a, a blue light special at Kmart where you can go get it. Faith comes. And so what that means is you can go get it. And Romans 10, 12 yeah. says faith comes by hearing the word. And the problem with most Christians is they, they, don't, they don't read yeah. the word. And if they do read the word, they, you know, it can be you reading the word out loud. That's what's so great about shows like this that, that bring the word of God to us. Just hearing the word of God is where faith comes comes from. And so I do. I, I, tell, I had a lady last week that was suicidal and she was like, I just can't pray. I don't have any faith. I said, you don't need it, honey. Just borrow some of mine, right? I'd let you borrow my car if you needed it. I'd let you borrow my jacket, maybe, <laughs> Joanna, if you wanted it. But you can also borrow my faith yeah, until you have enough. Absolutely. That's it. All right. If people even are, are skeptical again, we're going to tell them what God did here. Because here we are. We have the woman that came before you with the orphans from Ukraine. Right. And we have you who have the passion for the children, the orphans of Haiti. And they came together and you walked in the store with these beautiful pictures and it collided. Right. Tell us about this collision. So how amazing is it of people. all the times in the world for us to be able to have some unity around the world. So our children from Haiti, the 30 children that came here to the United States and sang up and down the East Coast, um, we at that time, up until, 20, up until March of 2020 when COVID hit in Ukraine, and I think she mentioned this, how the government re required all those orphanages to disperse. We had an orphanage that we supported in, in Ukraine. Uh, Small world. Up until March of 2020. And so we were actually going to bring 18 children from the orphanage in Ukraine to join our choir tour. That was going to be international, right? Wow. But these children, you talk about orphans helping orphans. I love that. These children in the orphanage in Ukraine drew pictures because they wanted to be a part of helping the orphans in Haiti come to America. So we had 400 orphans in that particular orphanage in Ukraine. Each one of them drew their own picture. Love, this one's my favorite. Yes, I just this. and so, so we cool. have only 38 of those, out of those 400, all the rest of them were sold on our product table while we were on tour. But we have 38 of those pictures that are left. There's a collage here in the front. I think Joanna has that. So if you would like to find out how this is so cool. Orphans from Ukraine drew pictures to help orphans in Haiti. Other way around. And now orphans in Haiti oh, no. are, no, it was the orphans oh, okay. in Ukraine. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Those are from Ukraine. Oh, okay. They're, and they're signed on the back in that was the other way around. Ukraine. No. And so now that was intentional to help the orphans in Haiti, which did help them get here. And now we're going to be able to help those same orphans in Ukraine. It's so interesting. Wow. We have 39 pictures left, and there are 40 children that are still in that orphanage that have gone over to Poland. So uh, you can go to our website. It's lovehimlovethem.org. And this, I think this flops up right away. Flops up, pops up, whatever. Flops up, flops up. Yeah, and you'll flops see up. on there, it's got all of the pictures, and it tells you what to do. But this I is a direct it. way that you can help. But how amazing that the... Full circle. Yeah.
Look how he did this. Oh my gosh, well, Linda, you know I could talk to you forever and I know <laughs> you'll be back. You just, you know, you're not gonna stay away. You always are into such wonderful ways of helping the orphans of, of Haiti and how they help other people because the whole world just comes around. Right. So if you could tell everybody in the last five seconds, give them a message. My message is this, if you have old shoes, used shoes, or shoes you just don't wear anymore, and you don't wanna give money to love him, love them, we want your shoes. We have an amazing ministry where we provide shoes for women in Haiti and for children, and one of our girls that was a recipient of those shoes in Haiti is now here in the United States running Aww. our shoe ministry. And I promised Rodolfo if she didn't get to come that I would ask for your shoes. So figure out a way that you can get those to us. And then last but not least, if you're down, if you aren't full of joy, if you are just having a rough time, even if not, I want Perfect. you to get this book, Choir of Angels. And if you can't afford the book, you call me okay. and let me know you and will I will it get it to you. Just the pictures alone in here will Thanks. change your life. So be sure to get Choir of Angels so that your world can also be changed. Thank you, Linda. I'm going to get one as well. And now we're going to go back to Jordan B. Band, Bright Light and Big City. Linda, thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Park Lutz, big city, man, I almost sold my soul. Looking for a future to call my own. When things were good, jumped in with both feet. Stage. Things were great until the spotlight faded. 